colleagues. Okay, now there's a comment here that's coming from Walter Pio. And Walter says, 100% panelists, the local elections are very important, but most folks, especially Democrats, don't pay attention to the local elections, midterms, and the primaries. They only show up every four years. That's a big mistake. He's not really campaigning, he's not really fundraising, and so you, you can take that for what that means. There are two front runners from the Democratic Party who are running, and so that's gonna be picked, that, that person is gonna be selected in the primary. So the primary is happening, I believe, in March. I don't have the exact, I can't remember the exact date, um, in the state of Maryland, and so it's going to be between Angela Alsobrooks and David Trone. And David Trone, is well known for his personal business. He has. Um, he owns he's, he's my representative. He's your representative. Unfortunately, I, I I voted for him because there was no other choice. Okay, well yeah. that happened. When you sometimes. say there was no other choice, what does that mean in English? The other choice was a Republican. Oh, okay. Yeah. So <laughs> so there's David yeah. Trone, and he um so he's cu currently in Congress. So he's mm -hmm. familiar he's familiar with the Capitol and, and working in the Capitol, and he has a lot of endorsements. And what about Angela Alsobrook, for those who don't know her? So Angela Alsobrook, she is the county executive um, in Prince George's County. Okay. And so she's been, um, it, she has, she has been, she's been all over Maryland campaigning and she has been racking up a lot of endorsements within the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, for those of our listeners who are in the state of Georgia, she recently got an endorsement from Warnick, which is, Senator um, Warnock. Yes, yeah, Senator Warnock from the state of Georgia, mm -hmm. which is a very impressive and big name endorsement. Correct. Um, to yes. get from outside of the state of Maryland. Mm -hmm. um, and so in addition to that, she does have a lot of support within the state of Maryland as well. Uh, David Trone has a bigger budget. Uh, he's more likely to get have those flyers in the mail coming to your house. He's yeah. more likely to have more likely um, to be on your timeline on your on your timeline and you know ads if you have them on Hulu. Oh, I've seen them on TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You see, you'll yeah. see, you'll see that because there's the money for those ads, and um, that person is going to be selected in the primary. It's very important for Marylanders to get out and vote and select who they want to represent them in the Senate. Okay, is all that money spent a tax rate off? <laughs> I'm just curious. So, sorry. So that is a question for another day. Okay. But you do have to do FEC reporting. And so it's public information. Yeah. Um, and you can go and see how much each party has raised. So the last time that I checked, I know that um, David Trone had 10 million, 10, yes, had 10 million in his. Um, yes. And then Angela also Brooks has raised and her fund rate. So he's self-funded. Her fundraising is more grass, grassroots small donors, and that has come up to the last FEC. Um, I believe reporting was about $1.5 million that okay. she's been able to raise up until this point. Okay, now for people who are not from Maryland, uh, now we know that uh, in the U.S. Senate, uh, the time is six years, but uh, the elections are staggered, meaning yeah. like every two years, there's 33 seats that are up, 33, 34 seats that are up for re-election. So for people who are not in Maryland, for example, mm -hmm. why, why should they be concerned um, about who is going to become the senator? Or even in these other states where, you know, like you'll be having elections for senators. The same reason we were we were concerned here when it came to Georgia, when it came to Warnock's race. Um, okay. It made national news, yes, but regardless of what state you're in, when you are a senator, you are voting on behalf of all of the American people because okay. each state has two, two senators. senators. Yeah. And, you know, you have to vote, and it, if there's a majority, you know, it's one of your, your actually both of your representatives are going to be the ones who are voting as well as representatives in other states. So it's good to have representatives that have your values or are going to vote on behalf of the things that are important to you, even in other states, especially when it comes to um, our Congress. And what's a balance of power right now looking like uh, in the U.S. Senate? <laughs> That's an interesting question. I, I, I want to look that up because I know that we've had some um, changes and some people ch who switched. Some people that? who switched parties. Yes, yeah. and that is something that is a 
concern. That hasn't really happened um So Chris, historically. Christian cinema, historically, it's not happened while someone is actually occupying office. Uh, to me, that, that was kind of unprecedented. Right. Uh, but then you have currently the the people the de- the people who are democrats and plus those who caucus with the democrats i think in the majority because you have to remember senator bernie sanders mm-hmm. is an independent he's not a democrat a lot of people uh, don't know that uh bernie sanders is, is an independent and then you have uh senator joe manchin west virginia senator who's a democrat but likes behaving like a republican um and and I think you know like his seat is up for re-election, and that's one of uh, it's one of those uh, competitive seats, you know that could go either way. So what I like about ha- um, being a part of a community that goes beyond my state lines is that I can now talk to people in some of these states and say, hey, how are you guys voting? Like what what is going on in 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 your, in your area, mm-hmm. and what what are the conversations that are being had because they do have an an impact, right? So. Um, we do have three independents in the Senate. And who are those? Um, I did not look up who okay, they Okay, but we have three are, of but them. We have three, right? Yeah. Um, that is very interesting because it's not very typical to have uh, independents in the in the Senate. And three is significant. If there's I believe only it's 100, Bernie Sanders. Uh, the, the one from Maine, is she called? Um, like a lady. There's like a lady. The, a lady, there's yeah. A, Olympia. Um, no, 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 no. no. But show, 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 show. Yeah, show, show, show. And, and, and then there's Christian Cinema from Arizona. But I thought Barry Sanders was from Maine. I mean, uh, uh, no, Bernie Sanders is from Vermont. Yeah. Vermont. Yeah. Well, they're next door to each other, so yeah. oh, difference is the so same. The, so, so yeah. So three is a is a lot. Yeah, and it's when a you, lot. And if you want to get something done, you have to talk to those three. So yep. as much as as much as they seem like a small group, they're mm-hmm. very powerful in yeah. that they have to be consulted, regardless of if it's a Republican or a, or a Democrat that wants to get something. Um, through the Senate, so uh, the whoever whoever is having Angus the Senate, King, sorry, right, oh, Angus Thanks. King from Maine, King. yeah. So whoever is running for Senate is going to be important for all of us uh, in this in the in the state of Maryland. I think that there, it does not seem. I don't think that there has been any polling that I can quote right now about about how things are leaning. But there's definitely clear indications as far as endorsements are concerned. Endorsements are not everything because Correct. someone can say, I like you. That doesn't mean a thousand people are going to, gonna, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. So a thousand, it doesn't mean that you're going to have that pull. Now, the idea might be that if you have a county executive who has this particular uh, amount of votes that they themselves won, that then those votes would, would go to the person that, that they are endorsing. That's the idea. Mm-hmm. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, so we shall see. Also, Brooks has a. Um, I know she has the county exec, Baltimore County Executive's endorsement. She has the Speaker of the House endorsement, um, which are some. You know, for me, I'm in Baltimore County, but th- that the Speaker of the House, of course, all of Mar- represents um, is the Speaker for all of Maryland. Mm-hmm. So that's some pretty big endorsements within the state, in addition to others. And I'm pretty sure coming, getting closer to the primary date. There are some individuals who are holding out and their endorsements who are going to reveal whom they're endorse, endorsing between her and Trone. Trone has gotten support from the the area, the representatives of the area that he represents currently, yeah. um, in addition to a lot of, of his colleagues in Congress, which I think is uh, remarkable, which is a, you know, a good indication of his ability to work well with his other colleagues. Okay, now there's a comment here that's coming from Walter Pio. And Walter says, 100% panelists, the local elections are very important, but most folks, especially Democrats, don't pay attention to the local elections, midterms, and the primaries. They only show up every four years. That's a big mistake. By that time, your kid's school may have been moved or zoned to another school district and gas station built right next door. That's very true. And and I, I've been in, in those zoning meetings, and people get so passionate uh, in Montgomery County, most people started getting wind of it when the lines had already been drawn. Mm-hmm. When you bought this house because you wanted your child to go to this school, but you're told, oh, sorry, from uh, next, next semester, year. Yeah. Uh, your child is going to go to the People across this road, w- w- you're going to this you're other gonna school. You're going to go to the other side, yeah. And there's nothing you can do about it. 
Uh, and then Slay says, please talk Texas. Uh, and then Walter Pew again says, also Senator Dan Feinstein, California, just passed recently, but the seat is safely Democratic. Uh, Lafonze Butler has been picked uh, by California Governor Newsom to to replace her. Yeah. Future president, future president. Texas, Texas is a very interesting prospect because it's uh, reliably. It's no longer necessarily reliably red, but it's likely red. You know, mm-hmm. like it's kind of pinkish, and that's because of the big, you know, like uh, cities. You know, we're talking about Houston. Yes. Dallas, Austin. Uh, Austin. I think of Austin. the top ten largest cities in the in the country, there are three in y- Texas. Yes, you know, I think Dallas, Houston. I don't know that San Antonio is uh, is part of that, but also San Antonio uh, is also part of the play. And I think Texas is an interesting prospect. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, Cruz. Ted Cruz will be running in this upcoming election. He but might not. I don't think he's going to get reelected. But, but but there's always been an interesting challenge from um I'm I'm forgetting the name of uh, this guy Biro O'Rourke, who, uh, who who actually gave him a run for his money the last time the last around, time yes. the last time right. that that yeah. he did that. So to me, Texas is always interesting because it's always considered as one of those states where. Uh, people feel like at some point it could become a purple state rather than, than 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 a red state. It's interesting too when you look at the fact that a lot of people have moved there, and then you also have military towns there too, right? Mm-hmm. So there is not a monolithic population there their way the way that it has been um, mm-hmm. in yeah, many years. Yeah, and I'm starting yeah. to see, especially now that there is remote work, that people are leaving their congested yes. cities and yes. working and moving, remotely yes, in correct. Texas, yes. and it also has tax benefits for you to do that. Yes. And so the Californians are going there. We are yes, we. Are already seeing, and I'm seeing people from New York going to Texas yeah. as well. That's a very congested uh, Manhattan's very congested, and so what what we're going to see is um, some shifts that we can't necessarily anticipate because the census already happened, and that happens every ten years, right? So we're yes. going to have to wait for some of these more incremental census information um, or demographic information to come out of Texas, which is going to be very curious yes. to see. Yeah, that demographic of voters is very interesting. I think there's a lot of millennials in there, and those people vote. It, they, it's definitely not on party lines. It's based upon issues and whether they're feeling yes. you or not. And mm-hmm. if they're not feeling you, you ain't getting jack. But if they're feeling you, they're with you 188 And then also the money in Texas is very interesting. We have a yeah. lot of bin- businesses that are there. We have a lot mm-hmm. of multimillionaires who are based there as well. Like.